back to my kitchen. I've got another great vegan recipe for you today. This one is a semi-raw one, which is awesome because when you eat raw foods, you know, foods in their whole raw state, all of the nutrition is still there. You're not losing any to the cooking or anything. So this is super healthy. Sean loves it. Sean is always there for me. Sean, do your gorilla noise. These are gorilla cookies. I called it that because I imagine this is what a gorilla would eat. Although, now that I've thought about it, he probably wouldn't. But I think it's pretty cool anyway. All right, Sean, enough gorilla. The gorilla is going to be in the cookie. So let me just uh, pull up my recipe because I don't want to get anything wrong. And in, also in the info box will be the complete recipe. So if you missed anything, don't worry about it. It's going to be down there. All right. This is made in a dehydrator. But if you don't have a dehydrator, you could still make it. You could do it in the oven at the lowest temperature. Like I think most ovens go down to 150 degrees. Just uh, you could do it in the oven. It'll probably not take as long as the dehydrator. But uh, it should work pretty well. So let's get started. In the mixing bowl here, I have about a quarter of a cup, maybe a little bit more, of peanut butter. You can use any kind of nut butter you want. You can use almond butter, peanut butter, cashew butter, sunflower butter if you're allergic to nuts. So I've got that in there. I don't want to put this in the sink because I want to lick the spoon later. <laughs> I hate wasting things. So I've got the peanut butter in there. You don't also don't have to do it um, in a KitchenAid. You can do it in a regular bowl. That's how I did it the first time, but it's just easier to do it this way because it's less work on my shoulders. So I've got um, about three ounces of maple syrup. Maple syrup seems to work the best on this. Don't get the one that's like light or anything like that. Get pure maple syrup because that's the good stuff. If you can't get maple syrup, agave would work really well. If you're not a strict vegan, uh, honey would be okay as well. So that is a quarter of a cup, not a quarter of a cup, three ounces of maple syrup. So I'm going to get that started on the mixer and then I'm going to add in the apples and then we'll check that. I just realized something. I forgot to show you the apples. I uh, cut these up on my mandolin on the julienne blade. Uh, you can use a grater if you don't have the mandolin. But this is basically about three cup, well, two cups of apples, maybe a little bit more, but the apple from three apples. You can use any kind of apples you want too, which this recipe is extremely forgiving. The, re the ingredients measurements are not really exact. You just kind of, um, if you want a little more of something, put it in. If you want a little less of something, put it in. It'll be okay. So just be careful when you're doing this because they're going to go all over if you just go whole ham on the speed. So just get everything combined and then we're going to put the dry ingredients in and then we'll be ready to shape our cookies. So that's all you have to do. It's locked. <laughs> Alright, so the rest of the ingredients are over here. You're going to need a pinch of salt. I always use Himalayan sea salt. To me it's the only salt there is. I have a half a cup of chopped raw almonds, a half a cup of dried cranberries, one cup of rolled oats, and two cups of oat flour, and that's it. So I'm going to get all the dry ingredients in there and mixed up, and I'll show you how to do it on the dehydrator. Alright guys, I got it all mixed up. It's amazing how well this holds together when there's no egg or anything in there. So that's what it looks like. I like to also leave the peel on the apple because it makes it more rustic and that's what this is all about. You want it to feel like you're eating something healthy without it being like gross. And this is definitely not gross, is it? No. No. All right, so I wet my hands a little bit just so it doesn't stick because it is a little bit sticky. And you can make these any size you want. You can make big ones. You can make medium ones, small ones, but it's probably a good idea to make them all about the same size so that they take the same amount of time to dry out. Because if you have some humongo ones and some little ones, uh, you're going to have to pick and choose and be like, oh, well, these seem dry enough. And it's kind of a pain in the neck. If you make them all about the same size, 
they'll all be ready at the same time and you don't have to uh, waste any time so you know it's just about I'm doing like maybe uh, two tablespoons worth and you just flatten it out if it's too wet add a little bit more oat flour if it's too dry add a little more maple syrup or actually just a little bit of water or maybe some of the juice from the apple but you don't want it to be too wet because then it's going to take forever to dry out these are just so good you can't even believe it um, you can even eat this raw if you wanted to just like this these are great for breakfast they're great uh, to put in your kids lunchbox for a little snack I mean I just can't even speak to how good these are enough because the minute my family tried these they were like yes you have to make these all the time and the hardest thing about this is that when you do it in the dehydrator these aren't going to be ready till tomorrow so that's the hard part you gotta wait sometimes you might not be able to wait that long so I'm gonna fill up my trays I'm even contemplating making another batch because this doesn't seem like hardly enough because I want to bring this to my mom's house tomorrow as well. So let me get these in the dehydrator and I will see you the dehydrator. I will see you tomorrow. Well, good morning. Uh, I've got my number one daughter taste <laughs> tester here. And oh. uh, you're firstborn. Oh, I thought that was some type of compliment. Uh, well, it could be. Anyway, um, these have been in the dehydrator at about 120 degrees since yesterday for about, I would say, probably about a good 15 to 18 hours. And uh, They're so good. Kristen is in love with these. Oh, yeah. In love with these, and so am I. So I hope you give these a try. Remember the ingredients and the dehydrator instructions are in the bottom bar. So, until next time, watch long. Edit.